Hi everyone, Kate here from Sewing to Overlocking and welcome to the tutorial today on knit binding. So I've had a few people contact me in the last couple of weeks asking for help using the knit binders on their cover stitch machines. So I thought I'd put this together with some hints and tips and how to get better results um, with your binding. What is knit binding? So this is the type of finish that you can achieve when you have a knit binder on your cover stitch machine. Now, most of the brands you will be able to get uh, binders that will attach to the front of the machine like this. So this particular one is a baby lock, but there are other, um, all the other brands pretty much will have these attachments or a version of this attachment. Some of them will have a plate that the binder will sit onto first with, before it attaches to the machine. Now, if you do own a Baby Lock Evolve or Evolution, their um, cover stitch plate, it's a smaller machine and the cover stitch plate is considerably smaller. So these binders won't fit on those machines. So you can't use it on using knit fabrics to bind your garments, but stay tuned because I do have another way around it for you. So this is a woven binder. This will fit on the Evolves and the Evolutions and I've got ways of getting around it so don't run away we will get back to that so um, but when you're working with these binders there's a couple of things which are really crucial that you have to be aware of before you start now the first thing is that you must cut your strips that you're cutting um, selvage to selvage on a knit garment because that's where your stretch is and you must cut them straight so even if you're more a dressmaker and not a quilter Invest in a wood rotary cutter, a patchwork ruler and a cutting mat because that's the only way I can get my binding straight. There's no way I could cut a strip of knit fabric with a pair of scissors and have it even. And if it's not even, you're already fighting a losing battle. So we want to keep that strip that you're cutting really accurate and, and straight. The other thing to think about is when you cut your garment out, one, the steps that you're going to do to um, build it. So like I said with this one, I overlocked my seam first, then I did all my binding and then I put the rest of the garment together. I like to construct the garment with the least amount of joins with binding because it ends up being quite thick. Because if you think about it, you've got a double fold top and bottom when you then overlock the side seam like I have here, there's 10 layers of fabric in that seam. So it's really quite chunky. So I like to build my garments and I have one here that I prepared earlier. If I take it off the coat hanger, I did have it hanging up. So this singlet top, I have overlocked the shoulder seam first and I've then done the step of binding the neck and one arm. My next step will be to overlock the shoulder seam and you can do the, the side seam that you finish too if you like at that point. And then go back to binding that armhole to then overlock that shoulder seam. I really like that finish. <laughs> as much as I can where I've actually just bound over the um, the seam without having to have um, too much chunky happening. So you've got to think about the steps that you're going to build the garment. If it's simply a t-shirt where you would actually overlock one shoulder seam, you could bind the whole neck and then overlock that closed. So you can't finish your shoulders and then try and go round. It's just too difficult to, to work with. So you have to think about the order that you're going to construct the garment in. You also have to think about the pattern that you're working with. Now this dress and um, this singlet have a seam allowance. So normally you'd make this up and then you would fold down your one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch and top stitch that um, the neck edge and the, the sleeves. The problem with not cutting your seam allowance away is that your neck's going to be tiny because you've got an extra one and a half centimetres all the way around. So the same as when I did this dress and when I built this, I cut away that seam allowance first. So particularly if you're doing um, a smaller, like a round neck, 
if you don't take that seam allowance away, you're not going to get that garment over your head or over whoever's head you're making it for. So um, that two really, really important things. Um, the other thing, like I said, we're going through five layers because we've got a double fold at the top, a double fold at the bottom, plus a layer of fabric in the middle. So we need to extend our stitch length because if you're sewing at a normal stitch length of, a, you know, two and a half to three, it's going to be tiny when you're working through that sort of thickness. So really important that you extend your stitch length. So take it up to sort of three to four. The other thing that um, is really important because we've got quite a deal of thickness we're going through is to increase your presser foot pressure. And that is on this machine, the little dial on the side here. So if you're not sure on your machine at home, grab your instruction manual out and have a look. A lot of them will have a dial on the top. And if it doesn't have a setting for a to, to heavy, um, because what we're going to do is increase more pressure so that it's holding it all together for us and helping the, the feed of the garment through. So um, if it's just a, simply a matter of turning the dial, turn it two or three times, increase the pressure, and then when you're going back to your normal sewing and your normal thicknesses that you're working with, don't forget to release that, that pressure again back to it. Um, differential feed, I always keep on normal. Um, I very rarely increase it, unless it's a very light, stretchy fabric that's um, feeding too quickly, then I will. Um, but most of the time you can work with your knit binders with the differential feed on normal. I've seen um, a few people in some of the forums and things suggesting that you lower your feed. What happens when you lower your feed is you're slowing it down, you're actually stretching the, the binding out, but you're also making your stitch length really, really short and really close. So um, really important diff feed, it stays at in or at one. So um, Okay, so I'm going to now set the camera up a little bit closer and we can have a look at how these binders work. Okay, so here we are in front of the overlocker and I have my knit binder all ready to go. Now you'll notice on the front of the binders, they actually have the sizing stamp. So um, in the world of baby lock, you can get an eight mil, 10 mil or 15 mil binder. And on the 10 mil, it actually says 36 mil. So 10 mil to 36 mil. The 36 mil is the size that you need to cut your strip of knit. To feed through um, which is just under one and a half inches and it's the same with all the other sizes so you'll see here on the 8 mil it says um, 30 mil so it will um, give you the sizing that you're working with but I'm sure um, the brands will actually have the instructions with them anyway so what we're going to do is feed the strip of binding with the back of the fabric facing you so we feed it into this bit here, and this is where your tweezers, screwdriver, whatever you can grab your hands on really helps. And we're going to take it through the binder all the way until we can actually poke it out the other end here. There we go. And you can see that by pulling that back like that instantly, I hope you can see that. Um, instantly, that's giving me that fantastic um, double fold there. Okay, so that sits in position under the needles. Now, I find um, with most of the brands, the narrow left cover stitch seems to be the best um, setup for. Uh, this type of binding um, being a stretch fabric often if you work closer to the right it tends to want to walk with the feed teeth across to the left so I've just found the left really works quite well um, making sure that the binding doesn't curl up and is nice and straight in the binder and we put this edge that's feeding in through this section here I'm just going to roll that out with my fingers because it's sort of got a little bit squished there we go and that will um, make it sit all nice and flat as it goes through. Then um, we need to attach the binder to the machine because we don't want it moving around when we're trying to sew. And somehow with your machines, you will have some little screws or things that will actually hold it in place. Now, this is where I always do a test run because you need to know that it's going to be in position. So the presser foot needs to go down. 
Um, I've increased my presser foot pressure as I said. I have my stitch length sitting at about three and a half. I'm just going to tighten these screws just a little bit. And off we go. So we can see that that's feeding through um, beautifully. And it's a little bit off centre. So it's right on the edge of the um, of the fold. And what's going to happen when I put the fabric in is it's actually going to walk over a little bit more. So I'm going to just loosen the screws and just position the binder across to the left a little bit more. If you then raise the presser foot, make sure your needles are up. And we'll just give the fabric a little bit of a tug into position. And then this should just about be perfect, I would hope. But I always do a test with the fabric as well. So um, because just having the binding running through really isn't enough um, of a test before you put your real garment in. So okay, that's looking better. And then I will put my fabric in. Now, usually when you're doing this, you are doing neck edges and things. So I've cut a little bit of a curve. And this is where, again, popping um, your little screwdriver or tweezers or something in position. But that will now then take that fabric. Um, probably at this point, the biggest hint I can give you is to make sure that you're keeping this straight. Don't let it fall down because if it falls, it tends to twist. And then you'll be so focused on what's happening here, um, you won't be aware that it's all twisted up as it's feeding into the binder. And believe me, I'm only talking from experience. So it's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy, really. So keeping the edge of the fabric nice and firmly up into that hole. I would have actually had scissors on hand but you can see that um, bound edge is just gorgeous and I've got my cover stitch there underneath as well so the sample that I just did for you is a really nice um, cotton jersey reasonably easy to work with so if you stick with a ribbing fabric or a nice stable knit you know you're gonna pretty much get good results every time Something like this, um, this is a wool blend, um, more like a sweater knit. And so you can use these light merinos and things if you're doing um, jumpers um, and have the same success as I've had with doing that type of fabric. But if you are working with a fabric that's really not playing nice and the dress that I'm wearing, I found... Um, was a bit of a nightmare the fabric really curled when i cut it as you know a lot of the um, stretch fabrics do so bring in my friend um, mary ellen's best press so um, if you're at all a sewer a quilt, if you're a quilter you probably know about this product i love this it's actually um, a, a spray starch and it doesn't leave residue on the fabric like a lot of the aerosol starches do. Um, it soaks into the fabric beautifully. So um, on my second attempt, I actually changed the width that I was cutting the binding because sometimes that can, you know, it can be a couple of millimetres, but it can make a difference as to how it plays through um, when it's actually folding under. So changing the cutting size didn't make any difference. So on my third attempt, I soaked it in Mary Ellen's Best Press, gave it a nice warm iron, and the fabric um, for my dress sat flat and behaved beautifully. So if you need to, that's always a bit of an option for you as well um, when you're working with these types of binders and fabrics which you know, don't want to play nice. We can always just get a product like Mary Ellen's Best Press and make it play nice. So I'm going to just run this through now. This is still set up for the cotton jersey. Sometimes we need to adjust, but actually that's actually gone through quite well. So grab my jumper that I would, would be binding if I was doing a whole garment, but I'm sure you don't want to watch me do a whole garment. Okay. 
So just always keeping this up and again, making sure this ends pretty nice and feeding it straight is really, really important. Because of the way these binders are actually set up, um, it's not difficult at all doing curves. As you said, I saw I did curves in the last one. I'm gonna do this one. And then when we've had enough binding run through, I'll just cut this off here so we can run that out. There we go. So we've had a look at the knit binder for working with knit fabrics. You can also use these with woven fabrics. You just need to remember to cut the fabric on the bias so that will create enough stretch for it to be able to fold um, and also for when you're going around neck edges and things as well. So this is a top that I made a little while ago now and I've used the binder to bind the neck edge, um, the hem and the sleeves. So I've chosen a chain stitch being a woven fabric and it just looks really, really smart, I think, and very easy to do because to fiddle around and try and self bind on a sewing machine um, to get it to do a double fold, you know, it's quite time consuming and you can see how quick and easy it is to do it um, using your cover stitch machine. So if you do own a cover stitch machine that only takes woven binders, but you like to work with knits, uh, this is my bit of a trick. So uh, it's always was a go to before um, the knit binders were released but it's the fold over elastic. So you can fold that over, obviously, pop it around the neck edge and sew it on a sewing machine. But if you have one of the woven binders, this is a 36 mil double fold binder. We can slide the elastic in. So again, the wrong side of the elastic is looking at you and it simply folds straight over. Now, the best hint I can give you is we want to keep the elastic centered in the middle here. So I've placed a little bit of sticky tape there that's actually going to stop the elastic falling down. So that will keep that up and centered and it'll make the fold much easier. Now with these binders, they are designed for woven fabrics. So when you get them out of the box, the way the binder is actually positioned is sort of set more for working with more structured woven fabrics. What I find is if there's too much of a gap between where the elastic comes out and the foot of the machine, it tends to want to open up a bit. So what we're going to do is grab a flat end screwdriver and we're just going to loosen off these two little screws and then we can slide that whole binder forward slightly and that's going to make it play nice. So we're going to loosen these off and slide it forward. I'm going to leave them loose, place it on the machine and just position the binder using the two little screws to the, um, the base plate. And then we'll pull the tail of the elastic forward. The biggest trick with this is you want to move the binder forward enough so the elastic's basically coming straight out and going under the foot but you don't want to have it so far forward that it impedes the foot when you put it down. So you want to make sure the foot can still go down and the front of it isn't lifting up because there's a binder under it. So once you're happy with where that's positioned, and I'm pretty happy with that, we're going to tighten those screws. And then I'm just going to reposition this a little bit further over. So really important that you are using the needle markings um, on the foot when you're positioning the binders. It will move a little bit, but it gives you a great guide to start off with. Beautiful. And then our fabric sits in under here. And of course, if you are doing underwear, you can do the same sort of setup and you can stretch the elastic as you go. And grab my 
and scissors. So there we go. There's um, a nice flat neck edge. So you're still getting that great um, look of the cover stitch and works beautifully um, around your t-shirts and things. And then when I've pulled that, you've been able to get that stretch. So if you do want to do the top of knickers and things, um, that can be a, a really professional finish that you can achieve too around your underwear. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it's really helped you um, with using your knit binders. I think they're an amazing attachment for, and um, a, a really, for me, it's an essential with any cover stitch because I do love to sew knit. So I will look forward to catching up with you soon. Don't forget my website is sewintooverlocking.com and my socials are obviously Instagram and Facebook, which is sewintooverlocking. So stay safe, take care and bye for now.